BMW just reached a big milestone making 150,000 of BMW i3s. As you guys know, I haven't been the biggest fan of the BMW i3, but tons and tons of people like it. Obviously, when they were able to sell 150,000 of them, I have always given, the, given them credit because they were one of the first ones to actually give it a shot. They stuck with this car throughout all these years. They could have discontinued a long time ago. There are some issues, obviously, that um, I don't necessarily like about it, but uh, uh, as you know, today is Friday, so Tom Malogny of uh, uh, Inside EVs is going to be here in his segment plugged in with Tom Malogny that we do uh, every Friday. And not only he likes this car, he owns one, and uh, he's going to talk a little bit about you know what he likes about it, uh, but also where BMW is at, not just with an i3, but also with the rest of their electric fleet that's due out in the next few years and uh, they've made some some good progress uh, in there so all of this is coming up next Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of unbiased electric car news. If this is your first time here, go ahead and click on the subscribe button down there so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, so before I bring uh, Tom in, obviously, I, I kind of give you a brief history of uh, what's been happening with the, with the BMW. Rem uh, if you, as you remember, they've just kind of announced the BMW iNext in September. They had this uh, big uh, World Tour where they... Um, hold that thing in a huge cargo plane uh, ar around the world. I was, uh, I was uh, lucky enough to be one of the first ones to see it here in San Francisco. I believe Tom did it in New York. And uh, they've been showcasing it throughout the world and almost every car show that I've been to ever since. The iNext was there. Uh, not really uh, that crazy about the IKEA-like in interior. And the exterior is still hopefully in the works. But it is a real attempt uh, by BMW to kind of step into the future. Of course, a couple of other models are coming uh, before that, and Tom will cover that as well. Uh, before I bring him on, just a, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Byton. Check out the all-electric m -Byte coming to the U.S. and Europe in, at the end of 2020. Starting at only $45,000, over 300 mile range. Uh, and don't forget to make your reservation. It's free, it takes about 60 seconds, and there are 50,000 people around the world that have already done it. So go to, uh, to Byton.com or check out the link in the description of this video so you can reserve yours today. All right, without further ado, let's bring in uh, Tom and he'll give us a good history and also a good overview of what's happening with uh, BMW's electrification. Tom, welcome back to the show. How are you, my friend? Hey, Alex, thanks for having me again. Absolutely. Well. Absolutely. Now, I know we're supposed to talk about Electrify America because you went to a big event, but um, they have a bit, a bit of a, a embargo until Monday. So we're going to talk about it next time. Um, I, I'm, I'm, but I can't wait. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to go myself. But uh, all right. Well, tell me. Um, uh, I know we have a, deeper, a little bit different opinion about uh, about the car, but uh, tell me what made you buy the car in the first place. You know, a bit of a history uh, of the car and, you know, what's going to be happening with BMW in the next couple of years, you think? Sure. So, yeah, I was in BMW's um, test program since 2009, where I was test driving the uh, electric Mini Cooper called the Mini E. Uh, that then handed over to the one series after two years of the mini E called the active E. So it's kind of natural for me to transition into an I three being in BMW's um, test program for a few years, for about five years at that point. And honestly, there's my uh, red I three. I actually got it wrapped as soon as I got it back in 2014. I didn't like the colors that BMW was offering. So I said, you know, I'm going to, give this a little bit more of a sporty look. And uh, I wrapped it in uh, a bright red and uh, at least- Wait, wait, wait. Are you saying when, as soon as you bought that car, you already didn't like something about it? Come on, Tom. I, uh, I thought you were like a huge fan. Well, color, <laughs> come on. Color is, is one thing, but you know, there's plenty of things about the i3 I don't love. Uh, I just wanted to kind of make it distinctive. So literally the it second looks good. after I bought it, I, it was in the shop getting wrapped. And uh, I was glad I did it because I. I think it gave it a pretty good look. I love uh, it, man. Actually, when I when you sent me that picture, I was like, "Whoa, that that yeah. looks pretty nice." And and it <laughs> and it brought back that mean look up front. And I think yeah. it hit some of the curves I don't like. So yeah, no, actually, I I know I'm making fun of it. I I think it's actually one of the better looking uh, i threes that I've seen. So yeah, no, kudos on that for sure. Well, thanks. Yeah, so that that's what got me into one. And you got to remember, back in 2014, there weren't a lot of electric options. I could have gotten a, a Model S you know, for $70,000, $80,000. But 
honestly, it was a little bit too big for me. I like small hatchbacks. Uh, I just prefer to drive them as my daily drivers. That's my black uh, i3S that I have now. I had my original i3, which was a range extended version from 2014 to 2017 when a woman texting ran a red light and plowed into me at about 45 miles an hour, totaled the car. Uh, the car held up really well. I, I, uh, the carbon fiber uh, body really did an amazing job. Uh, but that what, was totaled. Uh, let me ask you an important question. What color of a Prius was she driving? She's <laughs> <So> actually <laughs> driving like a 1990 Camry. <laughs> okay, so the that was okay. I was close enough. I guess. The car just crumbled <laughs> wow. when it hit me. You, you should have seen. It looked like she ran into a brick wall. But anyway, wow. I digress. So um, between the two cars, now I've driven the i my i three is a, a little over a hundred thousand miles. So I've got I've got a little bit of experience in these cars. And honestly, I really really like this car. Uh, the the one thing that I'll be upfront about with, and I think that really. Um, makes it not high on people's charts is it there's just it's a very bad value proposition the fact that the whole body and is uh, the frame is aluminum and the body is carbon fiber reinforced plastic it's an incredibly expensive car for bmw to make and when bmw first started making these cars they had the the they promised their shareholders we're not going to sell the car at a loss so therefore you know it comes in it starts at like forty three thousand dollars it's really expensive for a small car that doesn't have a lot of range. Uh, that said, BMW has improved the battery. This is the, the from it originally launched in 2014 with a 21.6 kilowatt hour battery. In 2017, three years later, it had a 33 kilowatt hour battery. Now, three years later, it's got a 43 kilowatt hour battery. So the i3 will go, it's EPA rated, I think 155 miles um, and that's the BEV version uh, with the Rex. You can throw in another 60 or 70 miles. So you can easily get over 200 miles uh, without having to stop to either refuel or put gas in it. So, you know, it, 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 and they did all this while not increasing the price. The price of the car now is basically the same as it was five years ago, even though it has double the range and double the size of the battery. So I'll give BMW credit with that. They, they, They've held the line. They realize that the car really is a, a poor value proposition uh, at that amount of pro that that cost, especially now today with cars like the Model Three and the the Leaf E Plus and the Kona Electric and Nero. You know, you we know, have all these cars that are ten grand less and go uh, two hundred and fifty miles. It's a tough sell. It's so weird that you're saying that because I thought if anything, the 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 price after you know they've they've had some amazing sales. I mean, at some point you could get one in California and I think even New Jersey because of all some of the uh, rebates from the utility companies and the incentives from the BMW and government incentives. I think you could get it for as low as twenty thousand dollars. If anything, <laughs> I thought uh, many times the value proposition was incredible. You know, because twenty thousand yeah, dollars that low. Yeah, it I know was that they low. had a ten thousand dollar. Uh, incentive where they partnered right. with uh, some utilities in New Jersey and also in California, and I yeah. think Costco. So that was ten thousand plus the uh, seventy five hundred dollar federal right. tax credit. If you're in California, that you then get the twenty five hundred dollar right. um, state rebate. So yeah, that'll that'll lop twenty so, grand off of it. But right. still, a a a good a well equipped i three is 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 fifty grand. So right. you know it's well, still thirty thousand after after the all of those incentives and. You can get a Model Three for thirty-five thousand. So you know it's it's still, can you <laughs> even with twenty thousand dollars off, it's a bad value yeah. proposition. Yeah. You know, all right. So, but anyway, people are buying them uh, because they've made a hundred and fifty thousand of them. Now I know that's not crazy Model Three numbers, but let's face it, there aren't a lot of electric cars that have sold one hundred and fifty thousand units. So. They've got to be appealing to some people like me, and and uh, you know it has to be a decent value for the people that are getting them. Okay, so um, a grant, and then again, you know, uh, if anything, 
huge respect uh, to them for coming up with a car, you know, many years ago, sticking with it, improving the range. Um, I know I'm, I, I don't like quite a few things about it, but those things are epic, and, I, and, and I'm glad they're doing it because, you know, they're the legacy manufacturer that's producing an electric car. Um, okay, so let's, let's talk about what the future holds. I mean, do you, from where I stand, I feel like BMW is behind, you know, uh, Mercedes and Audi and, and, and a couple of other luxury brands, uh, but they're just about to catch shop or like where 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 do you see them right now and where do you see they're going in the next couple of years are they behind so i don't know if they're behind yet it looks like they're about to fall behind because i mean look at it audi uh, they they're just bringing the e-tron to market we don't know how many they're going to sell it looks like it's a it's a nice vehicle uh, look at jaguar jaguar put all this money behind the, the i-pace and it's a great car uh, but I don't think they're selling as many as they as as they had hoped they would. So you know I don't know if they're behind, but I believe they're going to fall behind, and, and that's unfortunate because they had such an advantage and such a head start on so many of the entrenched legacy OEMs that it's 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 just kind of baffling how this happened. And I I honestly point back to 2015 when um, Kruger took over as the seat. EO from Rothafer. Uh, Rothafer was really all behind electrification. And I know this, I, I actually spoke with board members at the time. I spoke with very high level BMW managers back, you know, between 2010 and 2014. I had some pretty good access to real high level people at BMW. And they were really, BMW I was 100% behind electrification. They were going to build all these dedicated platforms, they, they had, uh, you know, concepts that you and the public never even saw that they were deciding which ones they were going to bring to market. And then all of a sudden they pulled the brakes and which is kind of uh, uh, strange. And it, it happened around the time that Kruger took over. So perhaps it, it goes back to a change in, in, in power and management at the board. But uh, they decided that they were going to kind of slow walk, slow walk the electrification and that's not just coming from me. You know it as well as I do. We've talked to some of the ex-BMW managers like Karsten Brightfield, Henrik Wanders, and, and reasons that they both gave me for leaving BMW was that, look, they were all into electrification. And all of a sudden, BMW, after they make the i3 and i8, they say, okay, we're going to pull back on the reins a little bit. And they didn't want that. They wanted to work at companies that were all in for electrification. So they left BMW. So... Um, what happened was that around that time, BMW decided we're going to we're going to ditch these dedicated electric platforms and we're going to transition to a flexible electrification platform. And all of the cars moving forward are going to be able to be ICE, plug in hybrid or BEV. So they're not going to have dedicated electric vehicle platforms. The two exceptions are the i4, which we've seen uh, uh, quite a bit, and the iNext that you mentioned earlier that BMW was parading around in that cargo look, Lufthansa plane in September last year. Those two cars, from what I understand, are the only dedicated electric vehicles that are going to be coming out of BMW in any time soon. The rest of the cars are all going to be, they're built on this flexible, flexible platform, that can accommodate all different powertrains. And the naming is going to be, let's say, the next generation 5 Series. The all-electric version is going to be called the i5. The plug-in hybrid version is going to have an E at the end of the number. Let's say it'll be a 530E. And then the, the regular gas one will just be the 530. So that's going to go across the brand. And we see that already with the 2020 iX3 because it's an X3 that's fully electric, and it's going to be called the iX3. That's going to be the new naming system uh, moving forward. So I just, uh, I, I, you know, they sent all of us this video, and I featured it a, a few weeks ago where they were showcasing, you know, iX3, uh, i4, and iNext, all three of them doing the winter testing. Looks like they're like pre-production. They're all in camo. Uh, looks like, you know, one of the latest and, and, and final designs. Um, okay, so 
I, it looks like they are coming out with, with them, or do you think this is still kind of gimmicks and, and we're not getting anything anytime soon? And am I understanding this correctly? You, your problem with them is, is that they're not co completely 100% committing uh, to all electric platform. They just kind of still want to have, you know, one one foot in the, in the, in the ice cars uh, universe still. Yeah, that, my biggest problem is that they're ditching dedicated platforms. You know, every industry expert that I've talked to, except for the ones at BMW now, have said, you know, the best way to make electric cars is they have to have a clean sheet of paper. They have to have a dedicated platform that's designed just for an electric vehicle. And to be honest with you, that's what the BMW executives and project, project managers and engineers were saying from 2008 to 2015. So it's not, it's nothing new. It's just that they decided that electrification isn't going to happen as quickly as they originally thought. So they're going to hedge their bet and they're not going to invest heavily into dedicated platforms. But to your question before, no, those cars are all real and they're coming. The, the, the next four fully electric cars coming out of the BMW, uh, umbrella, let's say. The first one's going to be for Mini. It's going, it's the all-electric Mini Cooper. That's coming out the end of this year. In 2019, that's going to launch. We don't know exactly how far of a range it's going to have. BMW is just, and Mini have just been saying that it's going to have a 200-mile range. My sources are telling me that it's not going to have a 200-mile range. It's going to have a much lower range, somewhere around 150. So let's wow. see if that happens. Wow. If it doesn't, yeah, that's quite disappointing. Uh, you know, no, in my opinion, there's very little reason for a new car to launch in, in 2019, 2020 with less than 200 mile range. That you know, is they disappointing. could say, well, it's a city car and in Europe, we don't need these long miles and maybe, but you know, I, I just, with where we are with energy density and battery cells now, uh, if you can't, bring 200 miles to the table in 2020 don't sit at the table so All that's right. uh that that's the the first car the next car is going to be the 2020 ix3 which is the all-electric version of the next generation x3 that's going to be using this new um variable platform uh then we have the 2021 i4 and only a few months after that, from what I understand, I was told by a BMW manager, the I next is going to be coming, which we don't have the name for that yet, but that's going to be sort of like a, an X5 sized, full sized, all electric SUV. Okay, but okay, so, I, I mean, I, I'm just as, as disappointed as the next guy, but the question is, I mean, they've been putting billions of dollars into the the electrification efforts, into specifically battery uh, supply chain, into the battery factory and all of that stuff. Where's that money going for? <laughs> I mean, I believe I've heard a number, $11 billion. Let me know if I'm wrong. Like, you can start like five buttons on that kind of money, right? What's going on? They have put a lot of money into their electrification. They've learned a lot of lessons. Don't forget, a lot of that money went into the R&D with carbon fiber. And the end result is that, yeah, we're going to use it for parts to help lightweight the vehicle. You might see CFRP hoods. You might see CFRP components inside the cars. But they're not going to have full uh, CFRP uh, bodies like the i3 and the i8 did it just is too expensive and it was a very expensive lesson that they learned but i i give bmw a lot of credit for trying for doing something totally different for investing so much money into you know basically it was a science project on electric vehicles the i3 and the i8 so uh you know yeah it's a lot of money but that's the cost of doing business and listen Auto manufacturing is expensive. It's the reason why not a lot of companies do it. All right. Well, so okay. where are we where are we going next? Where do you see them? What do, what do you see them actually delivering in the next two or three years? And how do you see do you see them losing the market share to BMW and Audi that are actually putting way more uh, efforts that are already kind of giving some some of the fruits? I mean, e-tron is now available pretty much around the world and Europe and uh, here in the United States. People are actually driving them. Where do you see a BMW fitting in uh, with, with the rest of them in the next two or three years? Well, the, the iX3 will be coming out in 20, 
2020, and that'll be an e-tron competitor. Let's see how well that does. Now, B- BMW has already announced that it's only going to have a 70 kilowatt hour battery. So that doesn't bode well for very long range unless they're a lot more efficient than Audi. Audi has a, the e-tron has a 95 kilowatt hour battery. So the, the iX3, it is going to be a slightly smaller uh, SUV, but it ha- the battery is is more than slightly smaller. It's, it's a lot smaller. Uh, so, you know, let's see where they come in with range with that. Until we have the specs on that, it's going to be hard to tell how that does. But for me, the, the real car that I'm really looking forward to is the i4. That's their quote unquote Tesla fighter. I, I hate to say it. I know everybody, uh, you know, there's there's been a million Tesla fight, fighters or Tesla killers so far, and none of them seem to come to the fight with uh, ready to ready to actually throw a punch. But that's that's an interesting vehicle. It's going to be a long range. It's kind of like an uh, a four series Grand Coupe uh, with uh, you know a good size back seat. Uh, it's almost like a, a crossover type vehicle. Five seat. Uh, I've been promised that this is going to have very long range, comparable with Model S. So th- they're looking at this is going to be their flagship all electric sedan. All right. Well, I hope so. I'm again. I'm not as uh, I'm not as, as as optimistic as I used to be, and uh, you are not helping with that. <laughs> I gotta say, but hey, we gotta call it like it is. And I think if uh, enough of us and enough of customers actually uh, uh, voice that opinion, especially with our wallets, you know, bringing our money to Tesla or or Audi or Mercedes, I I, I hope that that actually. Uh, changes their mind so all right well listen thank you so much once again for spreading some of the wisdom um, um enjoy uh, the drive in your uh, wrapped uh, i3 tonight and for the rest of your ownership and uh, maybe one of these days i'll come over and then drive in it uh and and maybe um i'll become a fan but <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll we'll see anything's possible tom right <laughs> you're you're always welcome to come when you're on the east coast any anytime alex All right. Okay. Well, I'll see you next week uh, when we'll uh, finally be able to talk about the Electrify America. I'm really excited about that one, man. I'm really, really am. So I'm looking forward to that. Lots of good news coming. All right. Cool. I will see you next week. All right, Alex. Take care. All right, guys. So that's uh, pretty interesting. I got to tell you, we haven't covered BMW in a while, right? And this is something that uh, that I've I, I've, I've kind of almost forgot, right? Because this is this is not something that's been on my or anyone's radar uh, uh, lately, as far as just the electric cars are concerned, which is a, which is a shame. However, I am looking forward to them releasing the Mini and an iX3, uh, and then we'll take it from there, I guess. Um, of course, if you want to follow Tom, uh, there's a link in the description of this video. And then, of course, he is on uh, on on Twitter under uh, Tom Malog, and as you could see, that was right underneath his name, as it always is. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our VIP list, where we deliver exclusive stories to you guys that you don't see here on this channel, and it's free. Go to yield4electric.com/slash. VIP and of course a quick shout out to one of my newer Patreons, uh, Chen. Welcome uh, to the Patreon family. Thank you to all of my Patreons for uh, contributing to this independent channel. All right, as always, I am looking forward to all of your comments. So is Tom, and I will see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.